Yeah, 20 minutes. Uh, the Whips have agreed that item 19, the motion on Brexit, as set out on the agenda, will be taken next. Can I ask Councillor Govindia to move and Councillor Hogg to second the motion in their names? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Shall I just formally move and then make my speech after Councillor Hogg seconded it? Thank you. Seconded. Hogg. There are two amendments to this motion that have been circulated, and I propose that these be debated concurrently with the motion. Can I first ask Councillors Anderson and Jones to move and second their amendment? I move my amendment. I second it. Thank you. And then I, can I ask uh, councillors Dr. Alan Khan and Gibbons to move and second their amendment? We move it on behalf of Dr. Alan Khan. And I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, now we have uh, Councillor Govindia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, earlier today, uh, Mrs. Main, on a visit to um, Germany, said that. Um, the vote was not Britain walking away from friends in Europe. And that is exactly what uh, the vote is about. It is about leaving the European Union. It is not about leaving Europe. Um, our reaction to the dreadful events in Nice demonstrate just how closely our values and our sec security are intertwined with those of the communities in Europe, and indeed the communities beyond Europe. Mr. Mayor, let me also make it very plain that this evening's debate is not at the beginning of a once with foreign affairs policy. Uh, I have no plans to create a cabinet portfolio for foreign affairs, uh, and I'm not sure whether there will be an occasion uh, of this uh, importance where we would have to repeat the kind of motion we have today. But the fact that we are having this debate is entirely to do with the importance of the issue to our country and our borough. For the remainders, remainers uh, in, in this debate, the results will have come as a huge disappointment and even sadness. The shock result was perhaps greater because of the political and academic establishments, the city punditry, and even the bookmakers did not see it coming. And yet, Mr. Mayor, on the night, uh, the early results from Sunderland and Newcastle gave a clue to what was going to unfold later that morning. And the outcome became pretty obvious when the metropolitan centres of Birmingham and Manchester voted to leave. And for Brexiters, the euphoria of success needs to be tempered. The debate opened up divisions, and as winners of this democratic exercise, they need to show understanding and, and, and magnanimity. We must also recognise that the referendum debate uh, on both sides was at times untruthful and on occasions needlessly divisive. But we should not forget that not all who participated in the debates had base motives. Mr. Mayor, what is done is done, and we should look to minimizing the downsides and grabbing the opportunities previously not available. So, moving on. In Wanzhou, there are some 26,000 EU nationals on the electoral roll. These are EU nationals other than uh, nationals of Commonwealth countries, which are also members of the EU or citizens of Ireland. Both of those groups we have a rather different and a special relationship with. And the first thing to say to them is that we value you. We value your contribution to our economy, to our institutions of learning, to our health service. And we value you for the gifts of new culinary and cultural experiences. In short, we value you as part of our community. In one sense, we have a long established record of the relationship with the Polish community. Many will here will recall the late Frank Staff, who was proud to be Polish and even prouder to be British. And now, Councillor Dr. Aline Khan continues that tradition. Mr. Mayor, walking around Nine Elms developments, it was very evident that many of the workforce there are, fully, are from Eastern Europe. They are filling skill gaps and helping deliver what is the, the greatest <laughs> regeneration project in our capital. Their contribution to its success is immense and invaluable. The French presence in Northcote has brought us bilingual education, and of course, these French nationals, exiles from the socialist France, are now part of the, of the London's financial services community. 
surely we want them to stay and try in this capital. During the debate, there were sort of tales of fear and dread about the imminent and irrecoverable collapse of the economy. So far, this has not happened. The recent City AM headline talked about clouds and silver linings, and indeed that is exactly what it is. Construction companies have lost shares, but then some have gained. So Barracks is down, Gallifer Tri is up. FTSE 100 had a better day to this evening than it has had for some time, and certainly much better than it had in February this year. FTSE 250 has hardly moved. There are talks of India and China wanting to have separate trade deals with us, and Siemens have continued with their plans to invest in the UK, unlike what they said they would. On the EU poll, the, the pound was trading at an unrealistically strong, uh, strong rate, and I suspect its fall was uh, exaggerated as a result of it. But today's headline is that the pound gains ground after bank sees no clear evidence of a slowdown. Mr. Mayor, pound going down, and I will conclude, um, uh, does mean that some of the services and goods we buy from abroad are going to be expensive. I am told by the construction company that the bricks that bought by from elsewhere are very expensive and will be, continue to be expensive. So the party opposite needs to stop throwing them around. These are valuable assets. Uh, uh. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, in concluding, sadly, the, the debate at times descended into places uh, where it should not have. There were fears that this debate would lead to violence and intimidation directed at what people would call outsiders. This is unacceptable at any time, referendum or no referendum. <coughs> Fortunately, once it has a proud record of tolerance and peaceful togetherness. And whilst there has been a small rise in such incidents since mid-June, I note with great relief that it is nowhere near the scale or intensity seen elsewhere. Even one act is too much and too many, and we must remain vigilant and continue to work with the police and others to nip this in the bud. But Mr. Mayor, we must acknowledge that the vast majority of our citizens are good, decent, law-abiding, and tolerant people, and it is something to be celebrated, but not taken for granted. And then on that uplifting note, I propose the motion. Councillor Daly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, although it's now a month since we first heard the result of the EU referendum, it's, it's still a result that's sinking in here in Wandsworth. And while I, like most people in this borough, voted to remain, I've thought long and hard about the result over the past few weeks and tried to search for some positives. I'm sorry to say that while I remain genuinely open-minded to the possibility that there may be benefits to Brexit in the long run, I've struggled to identify a single one. Even those who led us into this and those who voted for it seem unable to articulate them. The only certainty in the short run is that we face a period of incredible uncertainty, both economically and politically, and nationally we have uncovered a division that may take decades to heal. Economically, I disagree with the Councillor Govindia. I think it's very hard to find anything to be optimistic about for the next few years. The pound recovered briefly today after the banks started talking up the prospects for the economy. That is, of course, the bank's job. The FTSE 100 has been rallying because the bank has been talking about monetary easing. And, of course, the FTSE 100 has never been a particularly great barometer of our economic prosperity anyway. Britain was only just recovering from the economic crisis of 2008. Indeed, many young households not even completed that recovery and are still earning less today in real terms than they were eight years ago. And the last six years have been defined by the government's number one priority to reduce the deficit. Yet it's an objective that has George Osborne returned to the back benches today, drifting ever further out of reach. Our debt is continuing to rise year on year and will now inevitably start rising more rapidly once again, with the hope of a surplus by 2020 being for more than a fantasy. I'm not sure what papers uh, the leader's been reading. Um, what I'm reading about is property fund redemptions, the pound at 30 years lows, redemptions, uh, sorry, redemption of property funds, uh, uh, inward investment stalling, uh, and the bank poised for a further easing of monetary policy at a point where it's almost run out of chips to play. Could I make an intervention? Yes. Um, I, th I, I find lots to agree with what you're saying, but the one thing that I can't possibly agree with, and I suspect it's because you're too young, is the pound is most definitely not at 30-year low. 
lied to me about when it was at one pound thirty to the dollar. Was it one pound to one euro? Not, not against the dollar. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not going to carry on with any more doom and gloom. In one's worth, of course, much of the fallout of Brexit is outside of our control and the result is done. Uh, but there are areas where this council, still, I think, just about considered a flagship Conservative authority, can bring its influence to bear on Whitehall. And more tangibly, there are areas where we, as community leaders, can show the way forward for our residents. The vote to leave the EU has unsettled our peaceful communities and, awaken, and awakened prejudices, prejudices that I think before lay dormant. We can't be complacent that because a minority voted to leave in Wandsworth, we will be free of the rise in racist and xenophobic behaviours that have been seen across the rest of the UK. As councillors, we must lead the way in showing that a post-Brexit Britain and post-Brexit Wandsworth is just as intolerant of prejudice in all its forms as it was before. And we mustn't be afraid to talk about the benefits of immigration, as Councillor Govindia was doing, championing and reassuring the many thousands of foreign nationals in our borough whose presence here remains such an important part of our history and indeed the entire fabric of Wandsworth. As a council, we must, do all, must, be, we must do all we can to support our local economy, be that through creating more jobs, apprenticeships, working harder to attract timid investment directly into the borough, or by investing in new infrastructure and housing. And we must lobby central government to ensure that it sees the value of local government in this time of considerable change and does not impose further cuts on us as it enters yet another period of austerity. Above all, as a borough, we must be vocal not just in the parts of the debate that directly impact this council. We must use our collective voice to ensure that the government listens to the very significant majority of people in Wandsworth who voted to remain. Prime Minister May has said that Brexit means Brexit, but that's a statement that means almost nothing at this stage. We may yet remain part of the single market. We may yet retain free movement to people. We may yet remain bound by many of the EU rules as a condition of retaining some of its benefits. What is abundantly clear is that no one yet knows what Brexit means, not even Theresa May, and there's all to play for. I'm still deeply disappointed that this referendum was ever held. It's opened a door that can't be closed, and it's given a voice to prejudice, and it's all but certain to inflict economic hardship on our fragile economy. Ironically, it didn't even heal the division in the Tory party, which was, let's face it, the main reason it was called in the first place. But we can't undo the result, and we must now do everything we can to shape the best outcome. Tonight is mostly a night for consensus and unity from this council, but as the weeks and months unfold, our job in opposition here on the council will be to hold the majority party to that task. It was their government that has led us here, and as long as they continue to control Parliament and this council, we expect them to do everything in their power to steer us away from the worst consequences and restore certainty to our residents and our communities. If they can't do that, residents must hold them to account when the next local elections come around in 2018. I commend this motion to the Council. Thank you, Councillor McDermott. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, first of all, can I say that Councillor Hart and I are delighted to welcome you as Mayor of Wandsworth, particularly as you're from Nightingale. Okay. Um, going on to the debate in question, um, I can proudly say that I supported the campaign to remain in Europe. I went to bed on the Thursday night of the referendum, confident we would be part of the European Union in the morning, and woke up on Friday to find a completely different scenario. We in London obviously live in a completely different bubble or country from the rest of the, um, rest of the UK, and I think we lulled ourselves into a false sense of security. However, democracy is democracy, and I can see no part in starting petitions or going on marches to overturn the decision of the majority. We now have to make the whole thing work, work for us in the United Kingdom and particularly for us in Wandsworth. On that point, it's excellent news that the government has appointed a minister for London, and I'm sure we'll all send our congratulations to Gavin Barwell. No doubt he will take on board the, the fact that many Londons, Londoners would have actually preferred to have stayed in the European Union, but his job, along with the Mayor of London, is to ensure that London residents, residents and businesses <coughs> get the best deal possible out of our negotiations um, to leave the EU. Small businesses are the lifeblood of Wandsworth, and so I believe one of our first priorities is to make sure we stand up for them and put their message forward to the government's Brexit negotiations. I know from experience with our family um, audio-video shop that business times are challenging. 
Some suppliers are feeling the squeeze of increased costs of importing from Europe due to the weak pound, despite its recent rally, and others have already put up prices. And this is obviously going to have a knock-on effect on, on turnover in these already austere times. The business also has a very much valued Polish employee. We don't want to lose him. And as the leader has already referred to, I'm sure that much the same for many other Wandsworth businesses, because as he says, there are over 25,000 European workers who are already here and already contributing to our prosperity, and they must be allowed to stay. One big bugbear of small businesses is the perception that Europe wound them up in red tape. With Brexit on the cards, many businesses are now expecting a much simpler life. But I don't think that is going to be the case. And I don't think we're going to get, a get rid of bureaucracy in one fell swoop. Um, we've, all, we've got used to many of the European um, laws and regulations, protection for workers, health and safety rules, environmental laws. And in many cases, they are for the good. Um, but red tape isn't a hazard just of Europe. I'm sure that I know there's red tape for any country if you import or export to other countries. Turning to the larger business end of the borough, the Vauxhall Nine Elms Opportunity Area, this area depends greatly on overseas investment. Many invested here from outside Europe because UK was in Europe. With Brexit, overseas shareholders and investors are really feeling exposed to risk. Developers are nervous beings and hate uncertainty. It may be that new developments are postponed. It may be that existing planning permissions stall. If the economy slows down, building slows down. So I, so I think, think we should expect attempts to negotiate lower levels of affordable housing on the grounds of decreased profitability. And I'm sure this is going to cause our new mayor huge problems with his already challenging affordable housing targets. Even so, the UK and Wandsworth are still extremely worthwhile places to do business. And it's extremely good news that the Malaysians <laughs> at Batty Power Station are committed to their investment. They still have a great belief in our legal system and in ways of doing business, whether we're in Europe or out of Europe. And the European Investment Bank, which is providing £480 million to North, the Northern Line extension, has promised to honour this existing commitment. The only definite thing we know about the country's decision to leave the EU, EU is that the future is uncertain. So particularly important that Wandsworth holds its nerve and continues to steer a steady course in choppy economic waters. I support the original motion. Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, over the past few months, we've seen all too clearly what can happen when we have a government without a plan and a political class that has lost touch with a large part of the electorate. <laughs> Where's the plan? As we now chart our future outside the UK, uh, outside the EU, two things are imperative. We must develop a clear plan with clear objectives. And we must ensure that we're in touch with feelings, frustrations, hopes and fears of the people of Wandsworth. That means reflecting the reasons why 75% of our residents voted to remain in. The outward looking nature of our borough, our diverse and tolerant community, and the importance of trade and commerce to London's economy. At the same time, it means grappling with the reasons that one in four of our residents voted to leave. From my experiences canvassing prior to the referendum, it was very clear to me that a growing number of our residents feel that they have no stake in society, that whatever they do, the system doesn't work for them. What are the implications of this for us here in this council chamber tonight? I want to touch on two areas, the economy and public services. It's clear that Brexit is likely to have profound economic consequences, and I would tend to agree with uh, Councillor Daly that those uh, look like they're going to be bad ones, uh, certainly in the short term. And this situation is every bit as true of one's breath as the rest of the country. We need to move fast as a council to assess the economic consequences of Brexit for the local economy and to develop the strategy to protect the interests uh, of our residents. 
This is no time for the council not to be involved. We must invest more in skills to improve the prospects of those at the bottom of the labor market. Remembering that it was precisely those who did not have higher education that were most likely to have voted out. The party opposite must finally bite the bullet and compel its contractors to pay the London living wage. As Councillor McDermott was saying, we must provide more support to small businesses. Moving to public services, we must act quickly to reassure and retain the many EU staff who work in the NHS and our other public services, including the Council's own. The behaviour of those who claimed during the referendum campaign that voting out would free up an additional £350 million for the NHS, only to rescind this promise within days of the vote being won, has been <coughs> disgraceful. As has quickly become apparent, the outcome of the vote in fact threatens to destabilise vital public services by causing those EU citizens within them to question whether they have a future in this country. Speaking the other day on the Today programme, Sarah Williston, the uh, chair of the Health Committee, said that it was essential that the government guaranteed the future right of NHS workers from other EU countries to go on living and working here. I couldn't agree more. And we must not allow the imposition of arbitrary immigration targets to jeopardise the future of public services. Mr Mayor, we face a fight between two alternative paths. On the one hand, there is the easy path based on false promises and taking no responsibility. On the other hand, there is a path that's based on honesty, collaboration and practical solutions <coughs> based on the common good as we uh, together face difficult and uncertain times. For just a moment, until she appointed Boris Johnson, I dared to think that perhaps Theresa May might have the desire and the will to go down the latter path. I hope that we in Wandsworth today can do better than her. Councillor Usher. <coughs> Councillor Usher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, welcome to your first meeting um, as Mayor. Um, on first reading the original motion before us this evening, the paragraph that excited me most was the penultimate one. Strive to be an exemplar of the country's future success. Diverse, tolerant, low council tax, enterprising, socially liberal, and open to the world for business. I thought to myself, how things have changed for the better during my lifetime. I'm the daughter of an immigrant and the granddaughter of an immigrant. My father was Italian and my maiden name was Colacicchi. I was born some years after the war, but because of my Italian name and indeed my Catholic religion, I had all sorts of abuse hurled at me. Bloody papist, Italians were all cowards during the war your mother married the enemy. And, worst of all, forgive me, Mr. Moyer, WAP. Very difficult for a young child of eight or nine to understand, although I'm actually sure that many people in this chamber tonight will have experienced similar, if not indeed worse. My father always told me that I should try and feel sorry for people who said such things. But that was hard. As I grew up, I began to realize, however, that the abuse had made me stronger and more determined to fight against ignorance, exclusion, and discrimination in all its heinous forms. That's why I'm proud to live in Wandsworth, to have brought up my daughter in Wandsworth, and most of all, to be a councillor in Wandsworth. We all of this, us in this chamber play our part in promoting diversity and tolerance, and others have spoken and will speak about our aspirations programs, making a difference to the hopes and dreams of the young in our borough. Others will speak about the vibrancy of the local economy, the business opportunities, the training opportunities that exist, international business that want to invest here. And I agree with previous speakers who've said that the 26,000 EU nationals and their families should be allowed to stay here <coughs> and continue to contribute so much of the value that they give already to the borough. However, what else is exciting is that the new Prime Minister has committed herself and the new government to making Brexit work. This morning at PMQs, she repeated that promise and her commitment to raising standards for all in society through a strong economy, strong employment, and expanding Britain's world, uh, role in the world, which hitherto has, I, as I firmly believe, been hampered by a top-down 
centralizing EU. How refreshing to see a party united behind its leader. How refreshing to see that within a week or so, the Conservative Party has come together as one to create an even brighter future for all, in such contrast to the excuse for an opposition which is doing such damage to democracy. The new Prime Minister has introduced some certainty to the markets through her statements in the last week. Despite Mr. Uh, uh, Councillor Daly's assertions, the FTSE 250, which is actually the more important index, is up to nearly where it was on the 23rd of June. The pound has strengthened against the dollar and the euro. And, and the euro. Unemployment is down today by another 54,000. The IMF has admitted that their dire warnings of collapse were unjustified. And much to my surprise, it's already been mentioned that doom-monger, no less a person than the, bank, the governor of the Bank of England, has admitted that there is no clear evidence that a slowdown in the economy is on its way after Brexit. May I finally return to the original motion. The last paragraph is all something we all believe in. I know that we are a very tolerant community in Wandsworth, which is why I hope there have only been a couple of reported incidents, and as Councillor Govindia said, there's, you know, that, that's too many. But as a proud European, and also a resident of Wandsworth, I, I hope very much that we will never ever experience the sort of remarks that I was subject to as a child. And I'm absolutely sure that we in Wandsworth have got the, the tolerance and ability to ensure that that never happens. Councillor right. well well Jones. Well done indeed. Councillor Jones. Thank you. I welcome this motion this evening. Uh, it's especially welcome given it's, uh, it demonstrates that we can find common ground. The motion expresses Wandsworth's outward looking attitude and our commitment to ensuring that Wandsworth continues to be open to business and we share that. It's welcome to see things that we have in common in black and white. But many in Wandsworth have felt genuine devastation following the referendum result. And, and they will find comforts in the words of the joint motion, but they are also seeking concrete action. I'm sure, like me, people have come up to you over the last few weeks and said, what can we do? How can we move on? How are we going to respond? What can we salvage? People genuinely feel a sense of despair and worry. And in these uncertain times, what they're really seeking is leadership, answers, and action. And unfortunately, as councillors, there is really very little that we can offer. A joint motion, some warm words. In my case, a plan to start a European film festival. It all seems strangely inadequate. But there is one meaningful thing that we could do together to express our solidarity with the EU and our commitment to an inclusive community. We could finally commit to housing just 10 refugee families in the borough. If each local authority committed to just housing 10 refugees, roughly 10 families, the government could reach its target. If Watford can pledge to welcome 10 refugee families every year, if Barnet, a Conservative council, is willing to offer incentives to private landlords to house refugee families, then we can show that we are also willing to make similar concrete commitments. At the very least, Wandsworth could ensure that private landlords willing to house refugees in the borough are offered the same terms by the council as private landlords offering to house homeless people. But first we must begin with a target and then fit the policy to it. The Syrian refugee crisis is being shouldered in most part by Syria's neighbours, as we know, but also by our neighbours in the EU. By amending this motion to include a commitment to welcome at least 10 refugee families, we could demonstrate two really important things. Our willingness to support this government in its stated aim of welcoming 20,000 refugees and 3,000 unaccompanied refugee children, and our willingness to show solidarity with our European friends. And the reason why we should do that is because in this borough, the referendum result resoundingly endorsed our commitment to the EU. 
And as the elected representatives here, our actions should recognise and reflect that. At our last housing committee, Councillor Ellis said that there should be no upper limit to the number of refugees welcomed by this borough. I also welcome that statement. But we really should go further and state that there should be a lower limit because we are committed to playing our part. Now, in the wake of the referendum vote, is the time for the Council to show it understands that the residents of this borough are indeed, as the motion says, diverse, tolerant and socially liberal. That three quarters of them wish to stay in the EU and carry on working with our European friends. That we voted to stay in the EU by one of the largest margins in the country. Please don't take a party line on this amendment. This issue is too important for party politics, but approach it in the same constructive cross-party way that we have accepted the motion. Show that Wandsworth is capable both of listening and of showing leadership. And do it, please, while the EU funding for the Syrian Vulnerable Person Resettlement Programme is still available, because that money won't be available for, to us forever. But a statement of intent, such as the one I'm asking you to make, will have a lasting legacy. Councillor Lua. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and may I also welcome you to the Chair. Um, like Councillor McDermott, uh, I also was not in favour of leaving the European Union. That said, I don't have any intention tonight of um, having any sour grapes about the personal decisions um, that I made as opposed to what the nation as a whole decided. I would like to keep this as positive as possible, and I would urge colleagues that in these troubling times, positivity from us as local leaders is something that our residents need. Um, the opportunities for Wandsworth and indeed for the United Kingdom more broadly are actually quite diverse from leaving the European Union. I would certainly not deny that there are fundamental challenges as well. That said, the challenges of the opportunities even are there and can easily outweigh the challenges if we work in the correct way and indeed seek a new settlement outside of the EU. Probably to take that to a very Wandsworth level, the most important thing to come out of this in my view will be the opportunities for further devolution. It is true, um, as Councillor Thomas said, that there are many people in this country who <coughs> feel a disconnect with whom they are governed by. It is also true that they would like to see more of their decisions made at a local level. That is something where we can have influence over and we should have influence over. I would urge the Council, and I'm sure the Leader will very much take this opportunity to continue pushing for plans for greater devolution to local government and indeed following on the programme uh, championed by the former Chancellor George Osborne very much to see greater devolution in particular to urban areas. There, I think is great opportunities for us here in Wandsworth to take advantage of that. Secondly, looking at inward investment, as the leader pointed out, inward investment in this borough, in particular in the Nine Elms area, has been considerable already from outside of the EU. While I don't deny that there may be challenges about EU uh, investment into this country, although I do think they are overblown in some of the more dire warnings. The outward investment from other emerging markets is something we have already successfully done and something we should continue to champion, especially on the basis that we have already made ourselves as a diverse location for um, firms and indeed public sector organisations such as the US Embassy and the Dutch Embassy um, in the wider world. We do have a diverse and very inclusive community here in Wandsworth. It's one of the reasons why I choose to live here. Um, it is one of the strengths of London overall. It's one of the things that makes it unique and indeed uh, I think it makes it the most diverse, outward looking and global city in the world. It is saddening to see across the country that there have been instances of increases in hate crime. That said, it is positive that those have been limited here in Wandsworth. 
and I hope that that remains the case. We must, as all colleagues have said, focus on maintaining the stability of this community, and I'm sure that we shall do so. I don't intend to keep colleagues any longer. Um, many others have much more to say, I'm sure. But I do think it is important for us to note that the opportunities here for this borough, and indeed for the country more widely, are vast. It is not all doom and gloom. That actually the strength of our democracy here in Britain is something we should be proud of. That we had a decision which was so divided the country, but actually life went on much as it was for the vast majority of people. That is something we should be proud of and something that should be celebrated. Equally, maintaining our communities is our most vital task now as local representatives. They will look to us for leadership. We must give them leadership and we must give them the stability that this country and this borough and this city so vitally deserve. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. I also welcome this motion and I join with the majority of people in Wandsworth who feel disappointed at the result of the referendum. I think it was a mistake to have the referendum on Europe. It was a deal for political gain, which did not see the sunlight of democracy shining brightly throughout it. But we've got to make the most of it, and I agree, we've got to be positive. In times of trouble, I always find it's good to make a list. So I think we need to make a list of all those ways in which we benefited here in Wandsworth from being members of the European Union and do what we can to keep those benefits now that we're leaving. A list of the ways in which we can make the most of Brexit, whether we wanted it or not. There are many things that we can't change, but there are some that we can, even without setting out a Department of Foreign Affairs, <laughs> Councillor Gvindia. First of all, there are the EU laws which set many of our standards. For example, in waste management, air quality, workers' rights, trading standards, we apply and adhere to EU standards. There will be gaps in legislation coming up, and there is currently no plan to fill them. That's why we can make a case for those standards which we need, and to ensure the standards we need for the residents of Wandsworth um, maintain or increase. We've got a chance to open up that debate. We need to factor in more time to know about this legislation as it comes upon us and to influence them as they come. Second, we can be the advocates for Wandsworth businesses, students, academics and residents from Europe. Again, as there is no plan, we can shape the one that's being made. We can uh, and we must make the case for security of residency and rights to work for the EU resi Wandsworth residents from the EU. Those rights which students enjoy to travel and to come here, schemes like the Erasmus programme, which Wandsworth residents do take advantage of, we should fight to keep them. And the continuation of funding for academic and medical research, which is currently in, in danger. Third, the money. We actually directly received over a million pounds in EU funding in the past five years, and we currently have a grant for providing information and guidance for people with disabilities. We need to fight to keep those, that funding. When the money comes back here, we need to say what it is that we need to, to, to remain as funding coming directly here. Fourth, and most urgently, Brexit wrongly has given legitimacy to xenophobia and racism. And as has been said by many other speakers, we must together counter this. It's good that we're standing here together, united across the parties. And we must continue to explicitly show how much we celebrate our diversity, how much we're here for each other in Wandsworth, no matter where we're from, how racism will not be tolerated. We can join in with the London Mayor's very positive campaign that was launched on Monday, declaring that Lon London is open. Maybe we can have our own Wandsworth is open campaign. And finally, welcoming refugees and to the amendment that has been tabled. What's this got to do with Brexit? A lot. A lot to do with Brexit. Immigration became one of the big Brexit issues and one of the reasons for many who voted to leave. Refugees have a totally different status. They are fleeing for their lives and their rights are enshrined in international law. But these two issues have become connected in people's minds. 
and the willingness to provide for ref refuge for refugees from the current crisis in Syria has suffered. We need to counter this. We need to show that Wandsworth is open by welcoming at least 10 families over the next 12 months. It's a target and not much of a stretch one. Surely we can all agree on it and it only backs up the housing committee paper which is also on our agenda. We are welcome of refugee families both living here now and coming soon will show to the rest of London, the country and much further afield that we are a welcoming Wandsworth and we are open. I ask you to support the motion and the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Tom. Ah, oh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think many of us were actually quite uh, baffled, confused, and disappointed, as Councillor McDermott said, when 75% of us thought that uh, we would be in. And in fact, that was not to be the case. Because I think we all take the view that Wandsworth is a cosmopolitan, inclusive, indeed comfortable borough. We have many thousand Euro citizens working here. We have many of our residents working in Europe or working for European companies. And indeed, it was, a, I think, a surprise. And maybe we should have been more aware of the fact that in the North and the Midlands, the pressures there were much greater, and of course they voted the other way against what they perceived to be the London elite. And Peter, people voted, whichever way they did, uh, to leave or to remain. And certainly, I speak as a Scot, and there's three of us perhaps in this chamber, who had more than a passing interest in this. Because, of course, the last thing they wanted was to see another vote, another referendum and the risk of the breakup of the United Kingdom. And if I can digress for a second, um, well, I digress, I, indeed, I, I, as you know, I'm a Scot, but I was very cleverly born in England, just in case this happened. Uh, <laughs> but it is, I do want to congratulate the Prime Minister when the first thing she did on the steps of Downing Street to say that she believed passionately in the unity of this kingdom of Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland and indeed go off to Edinburgh the next day to make that clear to Nicholas Sturgeon. I have in my bar, in my ward, a company called Panorama Antennas, probably one of the most largest and the very successful business in the borough. Um, I spoke to them about the issue, because they've got something like 80% of exports. And yes, the lower pound helps, of course, but because they buy in components from Asia, that obviously doesn't help. They are uh, selling in euros, and they are slightly apprehensive. But nevertheless, being a dynamic sort of a company, they're now looking to market in the Middle East. Mr. Mayor, you and I were at the Wandsworth Chamber of Commerce uh, launch of the Business Award last night. And there was a good opportunity to talk to some of our businesses, like uh, Bar uh, Bannum Security, like uh, Hodder's Law, and indeed I was given a uh, survey done by one of the companies on the attitude of some 40 companies to Brexit. And it's quite clear that these companies are a bit upset. They're worried, they're holding back on their investment, they're worried about new projects, so there is that issue there of concern. They need reassurance. And perhaps it's encouraging to note one of the most reassuring comments came from someone called Gordon Innes, oh, must be another Scot, but he is actually the chief executive of London and Partners, which is the promotion agency used by the Mayor of London. And he said this, London's success is built on hundreds of years of international businesses, investors, skilled workers coming to that part of the most, to take part in the most open and dynamic city economy in the world. None of that has changed with the referendum result. So I think that in itself is encouraging. I, like I'm sure our Councillor Bentham, voted in the 1975 referendum. Then it was a much easier question, frankly, because it was just simply, do you believe, do you believe in comparing with a single market? And uh, I think the only senior politicians who opposed it were Tony Benn and Enoch Powell. But so therefore, there is a concern, and a lot of people voted against, I think, this uh, theme of uh, ever closer union because of the development of the EU, which they didn't care for. I would be interested to know from the Labour Party why they did not do more and were not more active in terms of uh, the support to David Cameron, because David Cameron was never going to win that vote on his own. He needed the support of across the country, 
and that failed to show. He used to say, you know, you join Labour because the best songs are from the left. Well, it's a bit like that when you say, uh, vote leave. The best lo slogans came from vote leave. Things like, you know, give us back, uh, give us our country back, that sort of thing. But all those slogans are now in the past. So what we now need to do is to very much get the country uh, behind us. The, the, the council must continue to support and engender confidence in our entrepreneurs. And we must really now enthusiastically back those policies of inward investment and job creation. I beg to support the motion. Councillor MacDonald. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, while I have felt at times genuinely anxious and fearful about what the Brexit result might mean for the future of our country, unlike my colleague Councillor Daly, I have found one upside, only one upside in all of this, and that is that for the first time in my life that I can ever remember, everyone is talking about politics. On the bus in Tooting, in the supermarket queue in Sainsbury's, even walking down the street, I have heard snatches of conversations by other residents also talking about what this will mean for them. But that is where the upside ends because you know, those conversations reveal that they are just as worried as I am about what the future will hold. And in some cases, they are fearful as well that if they weren't born in this country, they suddenly find that the place that they thought was their home no longer feels so secure. And that is something that we have to, um, all of us, protect against. But what is worse, I think, is that this fear and anxiety and uncertainty that we are all feeling is that the deliberate creation of the Tory party who took us into a referendum that they didn't know that they could win and it turns out had absolutely no plan for what they were going to do when they lost it. So it strikes me now that we've all got to figure a way out of this together and I welcome this motion. Um, given that there is now a settlement to be negotiated, I hope that the leader of the council <coughs> and is working with other council leaders across England and the local government association to use what is quite a powerful voice to speak up on behalf of those who work in local government across the country, whose working terms and conditions are dependent upon the EU. And I hope that there will be arguing that negotiation doesn't mean it's open season for bad employment law. We don't want to see this mean a loss in the rights that we've won on maternity pay, protection against discrimination, and all the other hard-fought rights that we have won for workers through the EU over the years. Because let's be clear, if organisations like local government don't stand up for these workers, then people working in small businesses haven't got hope. I hope we're also now thinking as well about the consequences of Brexit for affordable housing. Because if price, house prices are plummeting and stagnation in construction will occur, and there is a fear about um, a large number of construction workers who currently are from the Euro European Union working here being forced to leave, um, and we already have a shortage of 80,000 skilled construction workers in the UK. So I hope that rather than sitting on our hands, we're out there now thinking about how we plug this gap. For example, talking to private developers that if in future affordable housing developments are sitting empty, we can use those units to house those who need it. And let's not see the housing crisis that we have here in Wandsworth getting worse. I'll just finish by saying this. Um, but while our immediate concern here has to be about recession and jobs and protecting rights and protecting against discrimination, there is something also fundamental at stake here for me. Watching the Brexit coverage the weekend after the referendum, I was also watching uh, the 100th anniversary of the Somme and the coverage of that. And I thought about what the EU was created for, to bring together citizens to protect them, not just against economic ill, but also against the forces of hate and fascism. So while I speak in support of this motion tonight, I make a plea that for all of us here, whether you voted leave or you voted remain, let's do our bit to ensure that the lessons and the values on which the EU was originally forged are not forgotten. Thank you. Councillor Clay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'd like to congratulate councillors Govindia and Hogg for articulating in a concise and coherent manner Wandsworth Council's reaction to the result of the European referendum. This excellent motion is pretty comprehensive, and I've been asking myself what I, as one of a, lot, a huge number of speakers and quite a long way down the list, could usefully bring to the debate. The muse had abandoned me, so I started my own resident consultation. It wasn't scientific. I asked about 20 or so local people to help me with my speech, and they did sort of. Perhaps a fundamental flaw in my methodology was that none of my respondents was under 60 
None of them was worried about putting dinner on the table that night, and I think probably more than 25% of them voted for Brexit. They were more worried about the bin in Barmas Road, overgrown bases of trees, blocked gullies, electric car charging points. I won't go on, it's all familiar stuff, which continues to be important, especially with residents who routinely engage with councillors. It has absolutely nothing at all to do with this motion, much like Councillor Anderson and Jones' amendment about Syrian refugees. There is no doubt that Brexit voters were protesting about power being vested in elites, not just in Brussels, but also in Westminster and in big business. For them, these institutions don't understand their worries, in particular about immigration. For the moment, Wandsworth might stand out as tolerant and liberal towards immigrants, but we are complacent at our peril. We have different divisions, with fabulously wealthy people living alongside those struggling to make ends meet. For our older, more affluent residents, the consequences of Brexit will probably be limited. But this is far less likely to be the case for most other people, and in particular for our younger residents. They were already worried they'll struggle to find well-paid jobs and affordable family homes, and they can't see that leaving the EU is going to help matters. This is why our aspirations programme has never been more crucial. The Battersea Academy of Skills and Excellence is a great example of how external investment can benefit our young people, offering comprehensive signposting and training for the thousands of retail, leisure, hospitality and estate management jobs that will be created over the next decade in Nine Elms. On its own, though, it's not enough. And I'm glad that the Council, which has always been open to the world for business, is so well placed to intensify the Aspirations programme. Ones with councillors, regardless of political allegiance, tend to agree on more than we disagree on. When we do disagree, for the most part, it's over process rather than outcomes. I must say I feel very sorry for my Labour colleagues who must be despairing at the way their fundamental internal differences are being aired in such a public and damaging way. I can't believe that Councillor Macdonald is so excited that people are discussing politics all over the place. If you're a member of the Labour Party, you've got it in spades till September. <laughs> Unanimous cross-party support for this motion would remind and reassure the people of Wandsworth that most of us came into local politics with the aim of benefiting our residents rather than to further our own political agenda. As it is, we have two late amendments put forward by tooting Labour councillors. Amendments, I would remind you, to their own leader's motion. These confirm to us all that some Labour Party councillors perhaps are putting their own political agenda above reassuring the public. I urge my fellow councillors to support the motion and to reject the two self-serving amendments. Thank you. Councillor Alan Khan. Hello, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much for affording me the opportunity to address you and the Chamber tonight. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Clay, for your input there and your insight into what's going on within our party. I would just like to remind everybody how we ended up in this mess in the first place. And uh, interestingly, uh, neither Boris Johnson nor David Cameron seem to find themselves in positions of leadership. I'll leave you with that. We in this chamber are all very proud of living in Wandsworth and all that that means with respect to diversity. I know that you would have heard that from a number of speakers tonight and I echo those sentiments again. We benefit from the multiculturalism that lives and breathes in Wandsworth, whether this be through food, through shops, through religious groups, through festivals, we are rich in our diversity. Over a quarter of, res of Wandsworth populations are from an ethnic minority group and one in ten are EU nationals. <coughs> Community cohesion has been strong in Wandsworth with multiple schools, for example St Michael's in East Putney, promoting actively the importance of living together and working in harmony. And we as a council must ensure that this continues throughout Wandsworth, whether that be for the constituents already living here or for those that we wish to <coughs> welcome in the future. 
As I look around the chamber, there is great work to be done still to increase the diversity within here. But we do have many councillors who represent some of these very special, unique and diverse groups that we have in Wandsworth. When I was growing up, I, 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 ha I have a Polish mother and a Pakistani father and racism was rife. I didn't have the benefit of hearing Councillor Usher speak, but I hear that she spoke with passion about some of the issues that she went through. And I can say that myself as a family member went through these very same things. Growing up in the 80s, having your mum being shouted at and called a traitor because quite clearly she was very blonde and my brother and I were darker, and asking if she had adopted us or found us in a skip, that was quite frankly fair game. Having people set dogs on my father and my brother and I in the park was fair game. I was proud to be able to say that I was raising my children in a much more tolerant society until June 23rd. Many things regarding Brexit shocked people and surprised us all, but I could not have anticipated the sad increase in hate crime that ensued. In the UK, reported incidents of hate crime the week before and the week after the EU referendum went up by 42%. So over 3,000 cases were reported to the police. These are those that were actually reported. We all know here in the chamber that crimes such as this go desperately underreported. Under but sadly, here in Wandsworth, this was already on the back of an upward trend in hate crime. When we compare Wandsworth to the national average, hate crimes against black and Asian groups are already higher. We know that many of our Eastern European residents who are so valued and worked so hard in our community have been feeling threatened. When I look at the most recent census results, over 50% of Wandsworth residents say that they are not fully English. That means the majority of Wandsworth residents could potentially be victims of hate crime. No level of hate crime is acceptable. What am I calling for? Tonight I am calling for Wandsworth to be a zero tolerance zone for hate crime. I am calling for us to work with the borough commander to ensure better reporting of cases. We must call for every single case of hate crime to be investigated. And we must make sure that we promote the message of diversity and the intolerance to hate crime across our schools and communities. I want people of Wandsworth, when people say to them, go back to where you come from, I want them to be able to say, I come from Wandsworth and I'm proud and I feel protected. Thank you very much. Councillor Lescott. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have to say I was a little confused coming to talk uh, about the motion before us uh, as it deals with uh, political events way beyond the remit of this chamber. But uh, it does have impact in, uh, in Wandsworth and I was gratified that the motion was brought by both the leader of the ruling group and the uh, opposition. And, but I share Councillor Clare's, Clare's surprise uh, that uh, your own group has uh, amended, sought, sought to amend it to talk about things that they wanted to talk about. Yeah, perhaps that gives insight into how your group is run, I, I'm not sure. But, but anyway, nevertheless, Brexit will have far-reaching effects for Wandsworth uh, and the rest of the country. Most of these are best handled by central government and our colleagues in the House of Commons. We welcome the smooth transfer of power that took place last week with Prime Minister May providing the unity, strength, stability and continuity that this country needs during its Brexit negotiations. It is gratifying that two of Wandsworth MPs are members of that government. Uh, and I know that our new MP for Tooting uh, will want to hold that government to account as part of a strong opposition as soon as that emerges. Uh, of course, there are effects that may affect the council and concern our residents, and some of these have already been uh, alluded to. Um, pessimists say the economy could suffer. Uh, any downturn will increase reliance on our services and could affect the resources we have available to provide them. Residents should be reassured that the policy of this council will continue to be to provide efficient services, manage our budget tightly, and keep council tax low. We understand the in impact council tax bills can have on personal finances. Uh, the economy will inevitably affect the demand for housing of all tenures and the level of homelessness across the country, and in London in particular. 
Wandsworth Council will continue to work hard to attract investment in new, redeveloped and improved housing within the borough for a mix of tenures and social needs. We cannot solve national uh, housing problems within our heavily built up area, but we shall continue our efforts to meet the housing needs of our residents. Wormsworth uh, is part of London's vibrant economy and the Council will continue to work with our new Mayor to support London's businesses as it did with the last. Many of our residents work in the city so the success of the financial sector is doubly important. The new underground links with the Northern Line extension and Crossrail 2 are vital in that regard and as one project is well advanced the Council should be fighting hard for the second to bring vital benefits to our part of London. Wandsworth has a cultural mix which reflects the ethnic makeup of its residents. For a long time, the borough has attracted people from all over the world, and the council does a lot of work to help assimilation. Wandsworth does not have an immigration policy, but whatever the basis on which the government allows immigration after Brexit, we will continue to welcome and assimilate people from all over the world. The council therefore should carry on as normal. We should continue to provide excellent services and low council tax for our residents. We should continue to deal with those day-to-day -day concerns from residents we meet on the doorsteps and in our surgeries. Uh, we should continue to fight for the improvements that our residents demand. But we should do more than this. Brexit doesn't simply present risks to Wandsworth that need managing. Brexit presents a great many opportunities, as Councillor Lure uh, mentioned. Uh, and the reason I support this motion is that it accepts the result and looks forward to the future success the country can enjoy outside the EU. It is true that more Wandsworth vote, uh, residents voted to remain than voted to leave. So where does that leave us? We should remember that Wandsworth is a part of the UK and not a metropolitan region of the continent. Wandsworth cannot separate from the rest of the UK. There is no campaign for Wanksit. And if there is, they won't use that phrase. <laughs> we, should not we should not continue the arguments for the referendum campaign and let them affect what we do as a council. The referendum is over and we have a strong government focusing on getting the best deal for the country, which we should support. The campaign to remain should not now be used to create division or fear in our residents. We should be proud that this country has been able to settle an important constitutional matter peacefully and democratically when so many countries around the world are suffering violent upheaval. Our new Prime Minister in her first speech in Downing Street spoke of her commitment to unionism. I believe that we should also serve Wandsworth with the same commitment. We must strive to be united within Wandsworth and with the rest of the UK and remain open to the rest of the world. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Councilor. Short um, response to the um, Councillor Anderson's um, amendment, please. A very short one. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, just to say, um, just to let everybody know that um, I attended the Wandsworth Welcomes Refugees meeting along with Councillor Strickland, Councillor Sutters and, and members from the opposition. It was a very positive meeting, plenty of support for the Council's housing paper on welcoming refugees. All sorts of interesting ideas were raised about integrating refugees into our wonderful borough, and people committed to finding... Mr Mayor, can I get up and make a response to something or other any time, any, uh, for the Why second not? helping of the evening? Well, I mean, just, just is this a on. new kind of debating rule we've got here? Just if it's Councillor McDermott, she can come in 13 times. Can I just finish? Because in which case, I'll come in 24 times, please. Come on, it's out of order. She, she, can, she can do that. that, that and ju uh, there was absolutely... Uh, this it may be your first meeting, Mr Mayor, but this is clearly out of order. It's the new one we would debate. It's not. Thank you, Mr Mayor. There was absolutely no mention of a specific number. We want to welcome as many refugees as possible. There was no mention of a specific number on that night. The amendment is just political opportunism and isn't going to add an iota to supporting refugees in Wandsworth. Can I respond to that, please? It's not out of order, it's in standing orders. Thank Can you. I respond? Yes. Just hang on. Just hang on. Thank you. Short one, please. A very, very short, short point. It absolutely, this, this amendment absolutely 
is the embodiment of how we want to be in showing that we're, Wandsworth is open, that we are open and that it's a follow-on from our work on Brexit. It absolutely is in line with the, um, with, with the paper that was agreed at the Housing Committee. You've agreed all of this. Um, it's, not, it's not against anything which, you've, which you haven't gone away, thought about, come back to the Housing Committee and said you can do. There are two things that need to be done. Um, landlords need to be offered um, the same amount if you're housing a non-refugee as if you're housing a refugee. Currently, they're being offered less, so there need to be good incentives. And there needs to be a special recruitment campaign um, for those people who want to foster, would be able to foster unaccompanied children, because um, currently we don't have enough foster parents. I'm not doing either of those or suggesting them for any kind of political gain. Um, I'm only suggesting it as a way in which we can show uh, our diversity, our celebration of being open, of being true to the Huguenot tears that are on our very shield there in the middle. Um, this is not done for, out of any other reason except for agree, it's something which you should all be able to agree with and um, which strengthens this motion and that's why it's an amend amendment because you didn't agree with it to start with but I hope you can agree with it now. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Grimston. Councillor Grimston. Thank you Mr Mayor. I was just enjoying the sense of cross-party agreement in the, in the chamber and it's, it's a shame to get called at this moment. And I, I, I would just uh, start off by saying I, I uh, entirely, uh, I felt Councillor Govindy gave a very uh, uh, well measured and well uh, uh, thought out introduction to the, uh, to the motion this evening and thought Councillor Hogg uh, followed that and, and uh, I entirely agree with the statements there. I mean for what it's worth, uh, my own position is that I voted Remain, uh, the country didn't. Uh, but none of that, my, none of my basic views have changed. Wandsworth remains a great place to, uh, to live and to work. Uh, I think we have an extraordinarily robust community. I, I listened to what uh, Councillor and the member for teaching, uh, Councillor Alan Khan, said. I have to say I don't recognise that in my ward. I don't recognise in, in West Hill that sense of tension. I think the community, I, I've heard no example at all, despite asking the question on several occasions, of anyone feeling uh, that, that uh, any members of the community were, were responding against them because of their background. Just the opposite. I think I've heard far more examples of people asking what can we do to emphasise the fact that we're just as welcoming of, of, of diversity as we, as we uh, ever were. And I think it's probably worth noting that when anything has been around for kind of 40 years uh, and has uh, perhaps lost its original sense of purpose and dynamism, a major disruption can sometimes be what is required to get things going again. Jazz fans in the chamber will know uh, the uh, famous example when Keith Jarrett turned up to, to the, uh, the hall in Cologne for his solo concert, found the piano totally and absolutely useless, missing key pedals not working, not tuned. He had to completely change his style to respond to that particular piano and the outcome was the best-selling solo jazz record of all time. Uh, I think it's the job of all of us who did vote to remain to now prove ourselves wrong and to do whatever we can to demonstrate that the UK is going to go forward and have a great uh, future. Nonetheless, Mr Mayor, I, I would like to make one specific point referring to Councillor Cousins' uh, motion later on and why paragraph C I think is very important. We're talking about a number of diversities and it's quite right that we should. I think one of the most interesting diversities in our community is a psychological one. There's a vast amount of, I think, uncontrovertible research evidence showing that the type of people who come into what we do, either as elected members or indeed more so as, as council officers, tend not to be very representative of the psychological types of the people, and particularly in what Myers-Briggs uh, talk about as the TF uh, um, uh, axis. Uh, we tend to be very analytical, we tend to see the world in terms of problems to be solved, uh, and we tend to communicate in that way based very much on the facts rather than on the human response that it may have. Evidence is that uh, among council officers, and this is work that's been carried out for many years by the Local Government Association, uh, up in the high 80s of those who go to be council officers are thinking focused rather than feeling focused. Among members it tends to be in the high 60s. And my kind of impression, I'm sorry, but I do kind of try and guess your Myers-Briggs types whenever I meet you these days. I apologise for that, but it's my Myers-Briggs type always does that. Um, but uh, that's not like the population out there, where significantly more than half of the population 
uh, or certainly more than half the population, sees the world in terms of emotion, in terms of feeling, and often misses out on that. Uh, Councillor Govindia ref referred to, uh, uh, obliquely I think, to, to the uh, debate over the, uh, the, the museum some years ago. One of the things I learned very much from that was that I was attempting to put forward an analytical case as to why it was the right way forward. The response I was getting was an emotional, a feeling one, and I just wasn't meshing with it. And had I done that whole thing again, I would certainly be doing it very, very differently. And therefore, the reason why uh, Council Cousins and I felt that it was important to send a very, very clear statement in terms of the words, in particular, officers and members alike will take every care to make sure that uh, its own communications, verbal and written, show appropriate sensitivity to concerns of non-UK uh, passport holding uh, citizens. It's not that I wanted to have a go at anybody, but I was very much influenced and I think members saw it from a letter from one of my schools responding to a new requirement from the DF, uh, Department for Education uh, on ethnic background of, of children. This just appeared on the doorstep of residents a week after the referendum, never having happened before, simply saying we need to know what nationality your children are. And I fear that the thinking type which all of us fit, or most of us in this chamber uh, and this organisation fit into, it doesn't automatically strike to us that we ought to think, well, what is a Polish family that receives this letter, never having received it before? The information was perfectly accurate. I know the head of the school very well. She's an extremely caring person. She would be horrified to think that she wasn't, uh, uh, that, that this was being misinterpreted. But nonetheless, the interpretation from those who are emotionally charged, and it's a very emotionally charged time, is, I think, a diversity that sometimes we tend to miss out on. And when it comes to voting on, on Councillor Cousins' motion, I don't think we'll get time to actually discuss it. I'd be interested to know why the, uh, the, the, the amendment is there, because I'm not sure it changes it very much. But, but I would uh, urge that, in the same, uh, as someone said earlier, all this is about uh, uh, making sure that we don't put our own political agendas above reassuring the public, that we do send a very clear message out here of saying that thinkers as we are we're not necessarily always talking to thinkers, and we need to make sure that we don't inadvertently cause concerns among people uh, where it's unnecessary. Sorry, Councillor Dunn. Um, very quick intervention um, on the school form you're referring to, because um, I, as you may know, have three children, and my eldest is 20 today. Um, but all three of them going through schools, and some of them have changed schools several times, I've had to fill in forms on ethnic diversity for all three of them going back some years. So this is not a new form. Well, if I might, this particular requirement came in the April 2016 update that it had to go to all schools. It was something that some schools would do previously. It's now a requirement. My understanding is the school involved, which you know very well, uh, did not actually uh, do this previously. And I say, I'm... Just yeah, yeah. Okay, then some schools may have done it, but this is... But Can you conclude? Sorry, yes, sir, but even in those circumstances, I think, that it's a, if I might say, it's a typical analyst's response to go back and say, but they should have understood this. People don't always understand this. Sometimes the emotional reaction is something we need to bear in mind. And I would ask that, from that point of view, I say it's not uh, criticising anyone. I'm a great admirer of the school in question. But it is sending a signal out that all of us are aware in our behaviours and in our officers' behaviours that we have to be particularly concerned at this point of time that many of our residents out there, needlessly actually, I think, but that doesn't make any difference, may well be feeling unnecessarily nervous and we can take positive steps to make sure that that's minimised. Peterkin. Thank you. Councillor Peterkin. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And may I be the latest in the long line to um, welcome you to the chair. Um, Mr. Mayor, the word historic uh, is much overused. This or that sportsman achieves a historic feat. Uh, these countries sign a historic treaty. Uh, and dare I say that politicians feel a hand of history on their shoulders. Um, and so on and so forth. But there's no doubt um, that when the books come to be written in the years to come, what happened on the 23rd of June... Uh, will call into that category of events uh, which shape the future uh, and which can just, justly be called historic. The vote to leave is the biggest democratic mandate ever handed down by the British people. Uh, in the case of leave, 17.4 million of them, uh, some 40,000 of them in this borough, uh, and some 33.5 three, uh, million votes overall. Um, whilst the size of that mandate is undeniable, so too uh, is the magnitude of the, consequent, of the consequences. Uh, at some time in the next few years, the United Kingdom will leave the European Union and become an independent country once again. How we engage with other countries will change. How we admit people into our country will change. And how we conduct trade and commerce around the world will also change. 
uh, and Wandsworth will be heavily affected by all of those changes. Now, I don't subscribe to the view that seems to be prevalent on the other side of the chamber that this is a catastrophe to be endured, uh, but rather that it is a set of opportunities uh, to be grasped. But it's now incumbent on those of us who supported uh, the vote to leave to reach out to those who did not and to those who are fearful about what happens next. We can only take advantages of the opportunities that I just mentioned uh, if we approach them uh, as one nation. Now that in itself uh, is another heavily misused term. I think in this context it means that it's in the interests of all of us that we work together to make the best of the settlement that we agree with our European allies and to mitigate to the extent possible any negative consequences. And I think those of us on the sensible end of the Leave camp are certainly under no illusion that this will be an unsettling time for, those, for some in that regard uh, and uh, will be a time in which they need reassurance. It's in that spirit uh, which I, uh, that I want to address tonight's motion. Uh, it is, as, as many have, uh, have, have observed, a cross-party motion that I think all, including myself, can get behind in every particular. Uh, it's right to focus on those qualities which make Wandsworth so distinctive. Uh, and as a borough, Wandsworth is an exemplar of all of those qualities that the country will be seeking to rely on going forward. It's a borough with a history of looking outwards to the world. It's a borough with a highly skilled, diverse workforce with residents from every country imaginable. It's a borough with an enviable record of attracting inward investment with its business-friendly and low-tax approach. It's those qualities that place it ideally to prosper uh, in the New Britain, whilst recognising that their ultimate uh, sorry, whilst recognising that their ultimate status is a matter of agreement with our allies on the continent, those from other European countries who share our borough with us and who are such a key part of establishing and sustaining those qualities should be in no doubt that they are valued and appreciated members of our, of our community. And that status has not changed as a result of the referendum and that the Council will do absolutely all that it reasonably can to support and reassure them as we move forward. Um, but others have raised the spectre of uh, racism uh, and xenophobia. Let us be clear, uh, and I hope I can speak for everyone in this chamber, however they voted uh, in the referendum, when I say that each instance uh, of racist or xenophobically motivated crime is deplorable and as with all crimes should be investigated and where appropriate prosecuted with the utmost rigour of the law. Sadly, there will always be a tiny minority of people who consider such behaviour to be acceptable, referendum or not. But I think we in Wandsworth can take some comfort from the fact that there's been no noticeable uptake in such behaviour since the referendum and by all accounts community cohesion uh, remains strong. I won't be supporting the amendment uh, that stands in the name uh, of Councillor uh, Dr Alan Carn and Councillor Gibbons uh, on the basis that I think it's largely a statement of the status quo. Uh, I've seen no evidence to suggest to me that identified instances of hate crime are not at the moment thoroughly investigated as a matter of priority uh, and as far at least as I'm concerned this borough is already a zero tolerance zone for hate crime. In closing, uh, Mr Mayor, I'm reminded an American gentleman once remarked that for the United States the best days always lie ahead. Um, I believe that that's no less true for this country following independence. For no place in Britain is that more true than Wandsworth, and for no group of people is it more true than the residents of this borough, no matter who they are or where they come from. And we must now all come together to help make that happen. Uh, I beg to support the motion as drafted. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Belton. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I thought this was a really important debate, so I started to write something three or four times and threw it, up, threw it away each time. Um, as most people in the council have been on for more than a couple of weeks would know, for me to write anything would be pretty spectacular anyway, but uh, I don't do that. Uh, every time I did it, um, it just fell apart, so I feel a bit like Councillor Clay. But actually, as a result of this debate, I do want to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, though, can I just reassure Councillor Clay and someone else um, that the two amendments in the names of Dr. Alan Khan and uh, um, Councillor Anderson are not um, any sign of anything in the Labour group. We knew we wanted an all-party agreement. We went for, along with Councillor Govindia, as much of an all-party agreement as we could get, and that's fair enough. But all of us wanted to add to it. And the fact that you can't accept that is a, a different problem. But it says nothing about the Labour group whatsoever in that sense. Um, 
I knew that this evening would come up. I, I don't want to talk about the motion. We all agreed it. It would be pointless to suggest there's anything new exactly like Councillor Clay has nothing to say. So let's be, uh, uh, say something different. Um, the first thing I knew was uh, when Councillor Thomas referred to leadership, there'd be a cheap laugh. There's bound to be. Get your laughs over now, will you? Okay, Council, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, laugh, 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 and now we can get back to the, the serious business of what we're trying to talk about. This is about, um, we're in this situation though, about leadership. And one thing I wouldn't want anyone to go away with is the thought that uh, uh, the main culprits should get away scot-free. I've been listening to one or two conservative councillors so I get on with uh, reasonably socially in a place near here um, and uh, talking to them. And it's amazing, Councillor Tom came out with it this evening. It's the Labour Party's fault, um, yet again. It's the Labour Party's fault because we didn't get N votes out. Um, always the Labour Party's fault. Let's be clear about this. This is about a complete failure of leadership by the Tory party. Total and utter. Admittedly, it started badly with Harold Wilson having referenda, but referendum are about the political uh, classes, the people paid to, to do politics for a country, giving up on difficult issues. And of course, um, Mr. Cameron got away with it. Oh, what a laugh we shafted the Lib Dems on that one. Oh, my word, we shafted Labour in Scotland on that one. Oh, my word, we've got Labour uh, and UKIP on this. Oh, something went wrong. I mean, you can just see the jaws drop in number 10 and 11, can't you? Complete failure of leadership from someone whose only qualification in his own mind was that he thought he'd be good at the job. I mean, what more Etonian can you get? And this is what we're going to get now. Uh, we all agree about the nice things, but actually, are we talking about anything serious? Let's talk about the serious things. Um, for example, we have Scotland and England going their separate ways. Do we? Question mark. We have Northern Ireland and what happens in Ireland. We have... Thank you, you can intervene. You can take an intervention. Yeah, you can take an intervention. Councillor Clay. Councillor Clay. You can. Okay, well, a point of parcel explanation in that case, seeing as my name has been mentioned several times. Um, I did actually struggled to find something to say, but I did actually manage to stick to the motion rather than concentrate on national politics. That is not, not that is not an intervention that's of any use. The, <laughs> I am talking about how we got into this situation and you very well know it and it's pointless talking about that without talking about how we got there. And we have got where young have real problems with our elderly. Uh, those countries I've mentioned, I won't go through that again, where the North has problems with the South, where Liverpool disagrees with its hinterland, where London disagrees with everywhere. This is not something that we're just going to patch up because Brexit is Brexit. And one of the curious things about that, which I find really strange, how many people in this room, for one instant, thinks that Nicola Sturgeon's accepted the result of a referendum. How many people really think she's accepted it, and yet we're all saying we accept it? Uh, come on! Okay, it was 17 million, as Councillor Peter King said, but it was against 16 million. And when you, when you face another alternative and say, do you want to carry on with the Brexit when Scotland separates from the United Kingdom? I think lots of Tories would say yes, by the way, but the, you know, there'd be perhaps a different view about that. When you say, by the way, the terms we've negotiated with Brussels are not as optimistic as they thought they were, when you say there isn't 350 million for the NHS, etc., etc. Can will you, electorate, confirm uh, the position we've now reached? Well, that's really strange. It's really strange to hear that in this council chamber tonight, because in the last four weeks there hasn't been a single day when you haven't woken up to news that the night before was inconceivable. So, how you can be so certain about these things, any of you, I just can't imagine. Can I just uh, 
so I, I do think it's uh, rather more open for question than, than other people think. I go back to the leadership we've had. The one great, I disagree slightly with Councillor Thomas here, the one real joke of the last couple of weeks is not just Boris uh, Johnson, though he's a joke as well, but Liam Fox and David Davis, and they got to share a country cottage for the week. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about putting three parents in the sack and seeing what happens. <laughs> out of it. I mean, that really is humour. I and mean, if she can pull that sort of stuff off. But you believe the Tory... Do you believe that the Tory government are going to conclude this satisfactorily and with unity, which you're so proud about, in the next two years, three years, are going to be very difficult, very difficult indeed, and you won't be able to blame the Labour Party all the way down the line, even though that's your favourite sport. You have to face the facts as well. We agree the, uh, the motion, we all vote for it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Lover. Uh, Councillor Cook, I think you've requested up to 10 minutes, is that correct? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to reassure everyone that's highly unlikely to be, uh, to be needed. Um, but I did, uh, I did just want to start with some remarks uh, about the end of this motion, uh, which I know is a concern to members. It's become very clear in remarks this evening, uh, and indeed partly the subject of another motion uh, from Councillors Grimson and Cousins. Uh, which is uh, before us this evening. Um, much of what we've heard has been very optimistic and forward-looking, uh, and that's certainly uh, my view. Uh, but I think it's important that we address uh, head-on the subject of hate crime. And I think it's also worth bearing in mind that uh, hate crime takes many forms, uh, racial, religious, sexual orientation, disability, uh, and there are others. Um, I keep a very close uh, watch on this issue, um, as does our excellent Community Safety Division, our Borough Commander, uh, and indeed the entire MPS. Uh, I was with the Borough Commander just a few days ago talking about it at length. Uh, yesterday our Community Safety Partnership discussed a report on hate crime, uh, and next week our Safer Neighbourhood Board will do exactly the same. Um, it's a regrettable fact that there is hate crime in our borough. Uh, no point whatsoever in denying that. Uh, and very movingly, we've had descriptions this evening of uh, certainly what things used to be like. Um, and that is the case for all London boroughs. Uh, but I'm quite certain that we all abhor that fact and condemn absolutely all the perpetrators. Um, it is true, though, as well, that we are consistently amongst the lowest uh, of all of the inner London boroughs for reports of hate, hate crime uh, in line with the fact that we are the safest in a London borough. Um, and so I think we should take considerable reassurance from that and the numbers reported are low. Um, regarding recent incidents post 23rd of June, I'm assured there is little statistical evidence of an increase in such crime in Wandsworth, although, of course, some anecdote may suggest otherwise. London-wide, speaking yesterday, the Police and Crime Committee at the City Hall, Deputy Commissioner uh, Craig Mackey described a roughly 40% increase across London uh, with, from around 37 offences to, uh, per day pre-23rd of June to around about 67 per day. Um, but as with this borough, that spike has already come back down to almost normal levels. And so, again, I think we should find that reassuring. Um, and we did not see anything like that rise in our own borough. Uh, but there is, of course, underreporting. We've got to be realistic about that. Uh, and our reaction to that, and I was talking with Councillor Cooper about this just the other day, our reaction to that should always be to uh, implore anyone who is affected to report it. It's a criminal <coughs> offence, and the police should deal with it. Um, for many years, we know, we've known that domestic violence was underreported in a similar way. Uh, figures are now rising, uh, have been rising for some time, and while that's obviously subject for concern, uh, it is good in the sense that something that was previously hidden is now out in the open and we can deal with it. And I would suggest that uh, if there's one thing we can learn from that is that we should perhaps focus on hate crime so that that which is not reported becomes more fully reported. Um, we need certainly to understand the issue better. For example, we lack a sense of the victim experience uh, and through our own SMB, what I'm going to be suggesting next week at the Safer Neighbourhood Board is that we establish a group that explores the issue further and it gives a voice to victims. Uh, one element of that will be to continue to uh, uh, constructively uh, criticise police where it's appropriate uh, in the manner in which the crimes are reported. And I believe that we all have a responsibility to tell it how it is. Uh, while being sensitive to concerns, 
We must not allow this to become a defining issue beyond what the facts will actually support. And as Councillor Grimson himself said, uh, we shouldn't inadvertently cause concern. I would suggest that a sense of perspective is paramount and that this behaviour is in no way characteristic of our borough. And a number of people have made that point uh, this evening. The fact that a very small number of people have behaved appallingly uh, should not obscure the reality of a richly diverse community where relations are generally uh, very good. Accordingly, I see no need for the zero tolerance zone which is suggested. Uh, I think I've just explained uh, that point. There is no need. Uh, we are addressing concerns and the figures that we experience are lower than other in London, in 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 London boroughs. boroughs. Um, if London, I think I've made that point perfectly logically and clearly. Um, well, it's rather, it's rather redolent, isn't it, of uh, nuclear-free zones in the 1980s. You probably don't want to be reminded of your approach to nuclear matters this week, um, which was uh, tokenistic, didn't achieve anything, but didn't get to the substance of the matter. I believe we are addressing uh, this issue and we will continue to address it. And I've just explained that in great detail and what we will also do next week. I think I've made that very clear. Um, I'd like to move on, if I may, to be more optimistic because I think that's incredibly important. Um, if London is arguably the world's most successful multicultural city, then Wandsworth can make a modest claim to being amongst its most uh, harmonious of boroughs. Uh, this tolerance of diversity and welcome for newcomers isn't a new thing. Uh, Councillor Anderson mentioned the Huguenot tears, 17th century, that harks from, uh, and of course, uh, our, our approach to Syrian refugees, we're standing together with all other London boroughs in what is dealt with in another paper uh, before us this evening. And when it comes to tackling hatred and intolerance, the other examples, the Clapham sect started in this part of London, and we should be very proud of that. And that, of course, way, way predates the EU. Um, looking to the future, our task is clearly to make the best of the new reality that faces us. It matters not how uh, any of us individually voted, I would suggest. I know there was a full range of opinion, presumably pretty much in line uh, with our residents. Um, what matters now is that we make the best of the situation. Um, I would argue that few boroughs can be as well placed as we are now by virtue of our open mindset, a young, highly skilled population, record of achievement and extensive links already reaching way beyond the shores of the UK and indeed Europe, with a new US embassy in our midst, huge investment from several Asian countries, several sites, not just Nine Elms, uh, and thousands of new jobs being created, massive infrastructure with this <laughs> council has lobbied for, and of course, affordable housing. This council's aspiration agenda, which I'm delighted some colleagues have picked up on, makes a clear commitment to tackling lack of opportunity. And as the new Prime Minister said, tackling the burning injustice that if you're born poor, you're much more likely to experience impaired life chances, educationally, financially, in terms of vulnerability to crime and poor health, and ultimately die on average nine years earlier than others. Uh, our aspiration agenda is absolutely in line with what the Prime Minister was talking about. I was struck, uh, if I might be permitted to talk about foreign policy very briefly, I was struck today uh, by a report uh, from Policy Exchange um, that argued that Brexit presents opportunities to be more proactive, reimagining relationships and swiftly resetting those relationships, which in particular with the US and Asia. And since we will soon be the host of the US Embassy, as I mentioned, and have already attracted huge investment from several Asian countries, we perhaps in our own way already demonstrate what might be possible. Those concerned by what a post-Brexit UK might look like could do worse than look to Wandsworth for its breadth of influences and connections around the world and be reassured that far from becoming inward-looking, the opposite will be the case. And perhaps the doom-laden forecasts will prove overdone. It's far too soon to be sure, but the FTSE 100 has most certainly rebounded. The 250, which has quite rightly been identified by colleagues as being a more accurate measure, same is true. Now, falling pound brings distinct advantages for some. Um, and there are, of course, uh, signs that early uh, concerns about residential and commercial property may too be overblown, but uh, time will tell. Uh, IMF growth forecasts already pegged back are still well ahead of those for Germany, France and Italy. There are risks and threats ahead of us, we have to be clear about that, but there are most certainly opportunities too, particularly for taking greater control over our own affairs, something that we have long sought, uh, and the leader was at the devolution summit called by the new mayor just a few days ago. Uh, the new mayor recognises, of course, these themes in exactly the same, that we do, same way that we do, uh, and we stand ready to uh, assist him uh, in, in his, uh, his approaches to central government uh, to ensure that London gets the best possible deal 
uh, in this new post-Brexit landscape. So, Mr. Mayor, in summary, uh, we have some immediate challenges uh, which we will deal with, but we mustn't let those concerns dominate our thinking to the exclusion of so much that is positive about what the future might hold for the borough of Wandsworth. Councillor Hogg. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, th I think it's been a really good debate, and I'm, I'm really pleased that we had the debate. Um, given the sort of lateness of the hour and very keen to get onto the Royal Marine Reserve and, and actually questions, which are a lot of what residents are interested in, um, I, I'll just give a brief <coughs> recap of the debate. And I think we are very fortunate to have the councillors we have. I think people have thought deeply about this, people who don't always speak in these meetings. I think residents have got you know, the debate they would have expected. This is what people are talking about in the playground and on the bus and at home. Um, Councillor Govindia uh, said leaving the EU is not even leaving Europe and we must send out the message that we value you uh, to EU residents. Councillor Daly said uh, it's not clear what Brexit means and the only certainty we face is uncertainty. Councillor McDermott pointed out London is a kind of bubble and gave um, evidence from the family business um, and pointed out investors hate risk. Uh, Councillor Thomas asked the Brexiteers where's the plan and of course pointed out that much of our NHS is staffed by people uh, from the European Union. I thought Councillor Usher gave a very heartfelt plea um, for diversity and tolerance and against ignorance and discrimination. Uh, Councillor Jones spoke in favour of housing Syrian refugee families and I think you know, that amendment is genuine and I, I will be voting for it and I hope you do too. Uh, Councillor Lua pointed out uh, all of us have a duty to be positive, um, whatever we thought of the outcome. And I thought Councillor Anderson came up with a great idea to sort of say, you know, Wandsworth is open to sort of match the Mayor's London is open message. Um, as a proud Scot, Councillor Tom uh, raised the threat to the union, which sort of many of us won't have had in the front of our minds during the debate, but it, it could be a very serious piece of sort of collateral damage. Um, and Councillor Macdonald pointed out that people are discussing this issue on the bus, in the supermarket, um, and they are anxious um, about it. Uh, Councillor Clay uh, praised the motion. Um, I should say it was, it was very much more Councillor Govindia's work than my own, but uh, very pleased to be associated with it. Um, and it was wonderful to see um, the MP for Tooting, Councillor Alan Khan, um, sort of, you know, praise the diversity of food and shops and religious festivals, um, but, you know, pointing out that um, hate crime um, can have a huge, you know, and lifelong impact on people um, that it affects, so we, we cannot have any tolerance for that. Um, Councillor Lescott says Brexit provides more opportunities than risks and is perhaps something to be embraced. And I thought Councillor Grimston made very interesting points about the sort of psychology of it, the thinking versus feeling um, of the situation. Um, Councillor Peter, Peterkin, again, saw Brexit as an opportunity and not a disaster and one that demands a sort of one-nation response. Councillor Belton spoke with experience about the politics and the history of the situation. And finally, Councillor Cook um, returned in depth to hate crime and I think touched on the Council's very welcome aspirations agenda um, again. I mean, I'd just add that my, you know, what I've been telling people I talk to, hundreds of local party members I've addressed is, um, I just encourage people to listen to people that they disagreed with. Um, you know, uh, if you can't understand why someone finds the status quo that you like so much unacceptable, you know, th there is a job of work to go out and try and understand um, what their life is like. So. Uh, I'm very glad uh, that we put this motion together and I hope that um, we can all communicate this to our residents tomorrow, the unanimous spirit of this motion. Thank you. Thank you. The matter now before the Council is the amendment proposed by Councillor Anderson and seconded by Councillor Jones concerning the motion on Brexit, agenda item 19. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Those against the amendment? Six. 
Okay. okay. It's lost, 1726. The amendment is lost, 1726. The amendment is lost, 1726. Next one. Uh, the matter now before the Council is the amendment proposed by Councillor Dr. Alan Khan and seconded by Councillor Gibbons concerning the motion on Brexit, uh, agenda item 19. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Those against the amendment? <coughs> That's lost. 1627. The amendment is lost. 1627. The, the matter now before the Council is the motion set out at item 19 proposed by Councillor Govindia and seconded by Councillor Hogg concerning Brexit. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. And those against. And those against, and those against the motion. That's unanimously agreed. That's uh, unanimously agreed and approved. Set questions to the cabinet member. Yeah, thank you.